Hello, I am Dr. R. D. Kare, a pediatrician from Mumbai. Today we are going to revise our knowledge about headache. Headache is quite a common complaint in adults, adolescents, but also in children. Headache can be primary or secondary. It's called primary when headache itself is the main problem and called secondary when the headache is a symptom of some other underlying disorder. Hence, we want to find out the underlying disorder. <clears throat> headache is primary headache and it has a few etiologies. One is uh, migraine, second is tension type headache and sometimes an uncommon cause is uh, trigeminal neuralgia. Let us first talk about tension type headaches. Now, as you can imagine, tension type headache has often a psychological background. The headache is usually mild to moderate in severity. It is global, that means occupying the whole head and it is not focal as it is in migraine. It has a dull characteristics, but more importantly, it is not preceded or followed or accompanied by any other symptom like vertigo or uh, aversion to light or aversion to sound like it can occur in other disorder. Often the cause of headache in these cases is anxiety may be related to depression and this headache can go on for many weeks to many months. What is important about is to recognize that it is a relatively innocent disorder and therefore the management is more on counseling. The second cause of a primary headache is migraine. Now migraine as you know is common in adults but it is not realized that it is not uncommon at all in children. Migraine is moderate to severe headache. It has often got a little focality, which means that it may be frontal or it may be unilateral or even often it may be bitemporal. It has a throbbing characteristics and more importantly, it is often preceded or accompanied by nausea, vomiting and what is known as photophobia and phonophobia. It has a good relation to sleep. The patient with migraine really wants to sleep, is looking out for going to sleep and after sleep, the migraine gets better. This is an important aspect in the diagnosis of migraine. Migraine has an aura which is typical, atypical or complex atypical. A typical migraine aura may be in the form of different flashes of lights, visual aura and they may flashing lights in the form of dots and lines, zigzag lines, etc. And they don't last longer than 10 to 15 minutes. Often they precede the occurrence of migraine. An atypical aura is a symptom of numbness along one hand or maybe periorbital and it can last for a few hours. Atypical aura can sometimes be associated with drowsiness or altered sensorium which it is important to realize and complex atypical is somewhere there may be unilateral paresis or ophthalmoplegia or hemianopia. It is important to know this because it may be associated with some underlying disorder. Therefore, while a typical aura of a migraine is not very important. Atypical aura warrants a close observation for an unusual symptom like altered sensorium and complex atypical aura will often require a neuroimaging or some investigation like EEG to rule out an underlying disorder. Migraine in children often is not recognized because child is not able to express but it exhibits that the child is irritable or drowsy or pale and 
is unusual for that child to have that. In such a case, it is important to bear this, and when it happens repeatedly, it's important to bear it in mind that this could be a manifestation of migraine in children. And at this time, a family history of migraine is very helpful. I will be reluctant to make a diagnosis of migraine in a given person in the absence of a strong family history of migraine. However, often such a family history may not be forthcoming. But when you ask them that when a relative of yours, when he or she has an exposure to sunlight or late nights or exhaustion, do they get headaches? The answer often may be yes. And how severe, severe headache and they are looking for going to sleep in a dark place with no sound. This tells you that this is nothing but migraine and therefore the family history is positive migraine. Another thing to be noted about migraine is that we often want to wait for the headache that it may subside and then start treating. The sooner you start treating the episode of migraine, the better because you want to abort an attack of migraine. So migraine is a common disorder and worth following all this information for management of migraine. Now we come to secondary headache. Secondary headache is as a result of sometimes a simple cause like head trauma or a febrile illness or maybe even sinusitis. Much more important than that is to recognize that the underlying cause may be a serious disorder, usually an increased intracranial pressure. Such an intracranial increase in pressure may be as a result of hemorrhage or maybe as a result of cells occupied region in the form of tumor or even a vascular malformation. And therefore, a neuroimaging may be quite important for diagnosis of a primary cause in a child who has secondary migraine. For an approach to a case of headache, it's important to follow simple what is known as uh, approach depending upon the timetable of it. Now it can be let us classify it as an acute headache in which we have two subclasses acute for the first time and acute and recurrent. Acute for the first time may be a person who has never had a history of headache earlier and this may be sometimes as a result of a febrile illness or a head trauma but it can be also as a result of an acute underlying disorder. We know that acute manifestations often are vascular in origin. Therefore, it could be an intravascular bleed or beginning of a chronic meningitis or an initial manifestation of a tumor. And therefore, acute headache, which is for the first time and is severe, requires a careful assessment, especially a neurological examination. We have seen acute and recurrent has two important causes which we have just finished just now, tension type headache and migraine. They will come to chronic headache. Chronic headache can be chronic and progressive or chronic and non-progressive. Chronic and progressive means headache is not only occurring more and more frequently but is also more and more severe in its uh, presentation. Now such a headache requires a very careful uh, investigation and a physical examination because more often than not it is likely underlying disorder is likely to be related to uh, in intracranial pathology and therefore a thorough physical ex examination including maybe the help of a neuroimaging is important and a case of Chronic and progressive headache is a warning sign to us. Chronic and non-progressive headaches are also defined as those which are occurring for more than 4 months, which occur at least 14 to 15 times or days in a month and on a given day it occurs for at least 4 hours. The underlying cause for this is often related to a psychological disorder 
and often an anxiety or depression about what could be the cause of my headache on the part of the patient. So we have seen the approach to a case of headache depending upon the timetable of headache that it occurs. To Im imagine, when would you like to do imaging in a child of headache? As is very clear in a child with secondary headache with signs of ICP is clear. But when there are subtle manifestations of there may be a isolated problem, for example, in the case of migraine, altered sensorium or a focal neurological sign are often may be missed and therefore should be evaluated carefully. Finally, to summarize, headache is a common complaint in children. It can be primary, which is relatively so, no sign, but it can be secondary where a careful evaluation is required. An early diagnosis is helpful. In migraine, it's important to separate migraine from typical aura, atypical aura and complex. Thank you very much. The next episode will be by Dr. Tushar Mania on joint pains, often a foxing problem. Thank you.